Hello sports lovers, welcome to the most authoritative boxing channel here on YouTube. In today's episode, I shall be sharing my thoughts with you on the Zhili Zhang vs. Joe fight that happened at the Manchester Arena. I shall be giving you my take on the fight. What is next for Zhili Zhang? What is next for Joe Joyce? Does Zhili Zhang deserve a war title? Can Joe Joyce also become a world champion? So those are the par par parameters this episode would be based on. But before I get into it, if you have not subscribed to this particular channel and today is your first time chancing up on this channel, please do me a favor by subscribing to the channel. And to those who have already subscribed, I salute you. Don't forget also to like this particular video, express your views in the comment section and share so others can enjoy. Now to the fight that happened yesterday i gave my thought or i or i gave my preview few hours before the fight happened but upon the way in after when i saw the weights i knew that the fight would end quicker because joe joyce had gained 24 pounds from his previous fight let's remember joe joyce in the previous fight came in at 256 pounds and in yesterday's fight joe joyce came in at 200 and 81 pounds and that is a gap of 24 pounds. Zhili Zhang came into the first fight at 278 pounds and in this particular fight Zhili Zhang came in at 287 pounds. Yes, both came in at their career heaviest. Joe Joyce had put on 24 extra pounds whilst Zhili Zhang had put on 9 extra pounds. Now, the, the pounds that Joe Joyce put on was his downfall, in my humble opinion. Though I already thought Zhili Zhang would win the fight, I wasn't expecting Joe Joyce should be this big because you don't try new things at this top level if you have not been implementing it little by little. Yes, that was the biggest mistake Joe Joyce did. In the first fight, he came in way under weight and in the second fight, he came in way above weight and that is the doing of salas and i think that salas got it all wrong with joe joyce an experienced coach at, of his caliber i don't think he should be making this level but let's look at the fight itself the fight started the first round was just a basically fill out round you could see the things that i spoke about in the preview which is popping up here uh, Joe Joyce was circling to the left and moving his head a little bit. There wasn't nothing much in the first fight, just that both landed a couple of jabs. But I give the first round to Zhili Zhang. He was the more active fighter and he was the aggressor in that particular round. Then in the second round, it was also it also states, uh, started basically the same way, but with Zhili Zhang having read the rhythm of Joe Joyce. He started to close the gap a little bit. He began to land the jab more than he did in the first round and Joe Joyce has started having the reddish roll around his eye and and he bled a little bit in the in the second round. Then in the last 12 seconds of the fight, Joe Joyce trying to hide behind the shoulder and the cross block he did a mistake. Then Zhili Zhang landed the straight left. That wobbled him. He threw fast combination in the last 10 seconds. And that got Joe Joyce thinking whilst he walked down the corner before the third round. In the third round, Joe Joyce came in. He wanted to be the aggressor. Zhili Zhang being so smart at 40 years. He invited Joe Joyce in order for Joe Joyce to build confidence. So Joe Joyce in the first opening seconds of the third round was the aggressor. He was the come forward fighter. But I saw that it was all bait from Zhili Zhang. Zhili Zhang invited him and I liked the combination in which Zhili Zhang finished the fight with. Straight left to the body and the right hook that finished Joe Joyce. And one thing about Zhang is that that sets him apart from the likes of Wilder and Anthony A.J. Joshua is that he has devastating power in both hands. His left is very powerful, so is his right. And that makes him very dangerous at all levels for any fighter, anytime, anywhere. So, in the third round, and Joe Joyce fell flat on his belly. He slept for a few seconds. Referee Steve Gray gave him a chance. He counted him, but... I don't think even if they had allowed 
game giving Joe Joyce 20 seconds, he could have re re recovered and be in good condition to fight. What is next for Jili Zheng? I want to see Jili Zheng face Anthony A.J. Joshua or Tyson the Gypsy King Fury because Jili Zheng right now is has a, a very good name in Britain. So I think that he should keep campaigning with the top British guys and that is ideal. With Anthony Joshua, Anthony AJ Joshua had already knocked out Jili Zhang in the Olympics as you can see on your screen. It would only be fair if Jili Zhang is given an opportunity to avenge the semi-final at the London 2012 Olympics. Yes, and besides, now Jili Zhang has something in which Anthony Joshua may want. Jili Zhang has the interim championship. So if Jili Zhang has the interim championship, that means if Anthony AJ Joshua beats Jili Zhang and Alexander Usyk vacates the bells, Anthony AJ Joshua then becomes a three-time world champion. So Jili Zhang is coming into this fight with something very, very valuable. Uh, a mandatory sport in which Anthony AJ Joshua as at now does not have. And Jili Zheng's chances of becoming a world champion now is quite closer than that of Anthony AJ Joshua. Because right now in the unlikely event Alexander Usyk vacates the belt, Jili Zheng would become a WBO champion. So if Anthony Joshua fights Jili Zheng and beats Jili Zheng, that means if that is a big if. If Usek vacates the belt, Anthony Joshua is a world champion. So, Jili Zheng is coming into this fight with something quite substantial. Now, someone will say he is a high risk, low, low, low reward because Anthony Joshua's confidence is down the hill right now and he doesn't need to face someone whose confidence is oozing like Jili Zheng. Also, I will also want Jili Zheng to face Tyson the Gypsy King Fury. I think Tyson the Gypsy King Fury beats Jili Zhang because Jili Zhang wouldn't be able to put up or be this efficient in the later rounds. And Tyson Fury is way too smart for Jili Zhang. Yes, Joe Joyce styles make fight, but Tyson Fury's quick fit, quick hands is too much for Jili Zhang. That is not to say that it's an outright win. Tyson Fury would face lots of challenges from Jili Zhang in the later rounds and we want to see that and that would also be a very good fight if the Alexander Usyk undisputed bout does not happen. What is next for Joe Joyce? I think that Joe Joyce should be pleased with his performance as at now. He could have done better. He had the opportunity to do a lot of things right. I think that he should change his team, get a new refreshment. At a 20, uh, at a 38, it would be difficult to learn new things, but he should try it, change things, bring new people on board, and start marching forward. He should get a tune-up fight and face Daniel Dubois in the second fight because both of them are coming off losses, and if they face each other, the winner is likely back is likely to go back to the top of the food chain so i think that joe joy should have a tune-up fight and face daniel dubois in the rematch whoever wins heads back to the top of the food chain so does Jili Jang deserve a world title shot? Yes, I think he deserves a world title shot. But these two performances he has put up against Joe Joyce, I think he deserves a world title shot. Can Joe Joyce become a world champion? Of course he can become a world champion. The only man who does not have a chance is the man who is no longer alive. So far as Joe Joyce is alive and keeps working and keeps believing in the dream of becoming a world level or a world championship fighter, I think that he can achieve it. Do 38, nothing can stop any man who sets his mind onto something. That is why I always say there is no limit to greatness. If you have not subscribed to the channel still, please do press the like button, express your views in the comment section, and share so others can enjoy. God bless.